No time like the present. Hey, bookish friends. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. That's awesome. I'm Elizabeth. This is Reading Riley, where we like to read Riley, not take ourselves seriously, have fun with books, and today we're doing Mid-Year Freakout Day. Mid-Year Freakout Day. Mid-Year Freakout Day. Mid-Year Freakout Day. Mid -year freak out day. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And it'll be sweet, oh so sweet, when you read Riley. That's what we're doing. Find the questions here. I wrote them all down. Um, Uh-oh. Oh no, it's a drawing that my stepdaughter made me. <laughs> That's actually pretty good, although those teeth. A little bit scary. Number one. The best book I've read so far this year. It's so hard, but I wanna say my new favorite is The Humans by Matt Haig. I just love this book so much. I love Matt Haig in general. He speaks to me. I've found that people either connect with Matt Haig or they don't. A lot of his stuff, it revolves around the theme of mental health. A lot of it is philosophical in nature. This is a book about this family, about this alien, really unnamed alien, he comes to Earth because this his race is trying to stop something from happening that this mathematician on Earth is about to discover or has just discovered. So they have to put a stop to this information getting out because it'll destroy us because of our nature. And he basically takes over the body of this mathematician and begins to live his life. The aliens are like, get your job done, kill him off, do what you gotta do to like stop this. And meanwhile, he falls in love with humanity. It's hilarious the way he talks to the dog and the dog's perspective is so funny. The way he perceives earth everything's so strange to him and it really like takes you outside of everyday life i laughed out loud so much i just thought it was amazing and lovely so highly recommend that also i want to mention the egg by andy weir which is a three-page short story that i absolutely loved also i'm thinking of ending things by ian reed another really close contender because i just was so shocked by the twist i had so much fun with that book it just kept me incredibly captivated all right number two the best sequel you have read so far this year i went through my list and i've only read two sequels this year one of them was a reread of a court of mist and fury so i'm not going to count that well i can count it but either way i'm going to pick Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert, which I loved as well. I loved all three of these books. I'm sure you've heard about it if you are on BookTube or watch any BookTube at all, because these books have taken BookTube by storm. <laughs> And so I'm not going to give you full details or anything, but it's basically a, a fake dating romance book. Danny is very detached and Zap is very sweet, emotionally intelligent and self-aware. And they turn out to be just a really, really sweet couple. Love them. Number three, a new release that I haven't read yet, but want to. And that is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This is one of my five star predictions that I didn't get to include in my last five star prediction video because I haven't read it yet. I'm very much looking forward to it and I've heard awesome things. But now see, after that five star prediction video that I just did, oh God, hair, what is happening? I'm like worried about books that I'm really excited about now because I had a disappointment there, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a second. Now I don't trust hype as much, I guess. I just assumed that if, if it's hyped up that people liked it, that a lot, if a lot of people liked it, then I probably will too, but that's not necessarily the case. So definitely gonna read this, excited for it, but we'll see. Number four, my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. First one is called Paradise West Virginia by Rob Rufus. This is one that I've never read this author before, but this book sounds so up my alley that I'm just like super stoked about it. And it's it's about a true crime podcast serial killer thing, right? And these kids and their dad is convicted of being this serial killer, but they think he's innocent. This podcast comes to town to investigate this. There's a connection to a cult 
Like, it's just got everything. Can't wait for it. And I'm hoping that's going to be just amazing. I'm going to love it. Another one is a translated release called Bullet Train. So it's by Katoro Isaka. It's a Japanese novel that I think has been around for like 10 years, if I remember correctly. It's huge in Japan. And now we're getting the translation this year. It's giving me like Saw vibes, but also like heist kind of vibes. I guess all of these like bad guys have been put together on this bullet train under the lure of getting this like huge amount of money. They're going to be picked off one by one type of thing. And then another one is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. Love Alice Feeney. This book has a, a really fun trope that I've never seen before. And it's this husband and wife and they celebrate their anniversary together every year. And every year she writes him a letter, but she doesn't let him read it. And I think it's been I want to say 10 years, but I could be making that up. Now she's going to let him read it. But the thing is, this husband has this weird perception issue where he cannot recognize faces. So he only recognizes voices. And so he doesn't know what his wife looks like. So something tells me his wife is not his wife. And I just love this premise. So it sounds great. Number five, my biggest disappointment of the year. I have to mention If I Disappear by Eliza Jane Brazier. Um, I hate to like keep like bringing that up because I know it's her debut novel and I don't want to like shit on anything but I just I really was disappointed and I'm being honest about it so that's all there is to it. This is another one that has the true crime trope and the podcast trope that I love so dearly. What I was the most sad about is that I thought there was going to be this commentary on obsession um, having to do with this whole true crime craze which I am a part of. I love true crime. But I wanted it to be kind of a social commentary about that. And it, it didn't go there. And not only that, but the ending made no sense. And it was I didn't believe that the author actually likes true crime. And then my second disappointment, my most recent disappointment, unfortunately, is the Southern Book Club's got Guide to Slaying Vampires. I just didn't like it. I originally gave it three stars. But I think I'm not I think I have lowered it to two stars on Goodreads. Because when I think three stars, that's a book that I like. And this book was really weird for me because the first 20% of it, I really, really did like, like really loved. And the last 20% of it, I really liked too. But the middle not only had like terrible pacing, but it also triggered the shit out of me. I just didn't like this book. So I have to, even though it has redeeming qualities, I just didn't like it. And if you want to know more about this, I will send you to my most recent vlog and you can check out how I actually felt about that in real time because... Ooh, had a visceral reaction. Number six, my biggest surprise. Okay, this one I'm really excited to talk about because I've not seen anyone talk about this other than myself on booktube and I just loved it so, so much. Meet Me in Another Life. It's weird because this one is also really genre bending and the genre of this is a spoiler. So like it's really hard to say anything about this without giving something away. But basically we're following these two people. They have seemingly infinite lifetimes and they always meet each other. They start to realize a pattern to this. They're always different ages. They're different relationships when they meet. They're not always like in love. It's not necessarily like a, a soulmate thing, but it is a soulmate thing, but not like that. They realize that this is for a purpose. One of them is uh, really religious. One of them is a skeptic and you get a lot of discussion about fate and God and what we're supposed to do. But then the twist comes and if you see the cover, you have like kind of spacey vibes. I will say there is kind of a magical realism aspect to this. I thought it was beautiful and just so stunning. And I hope people read this because I thought it was really good. This is another debut novel and I can't wait to see what else she has to offer because it was wonderful. Favorite new author. So that has to be between Matt Haig, Richard Osman, who wrote The Thursday Murder Club, which I really loved, Catriona Silva, Sylvie, excuse me, Catriona Sylvie, Ian Reed, Talia Hibbert, Stephen Graham Jones. I don't even know. There's so many. I love them all. Number eight, fictional crush. I feel like most of my crushes are either romance, obviously, or fantasy. And I really haven't been reading much fantasy. So We've got romance and these are a tie. I have Red from Get a Life Chloe Brown and he's just like a sweetheart. Both of these guys are have that thing about them where they have that like 
fall on your sword mentality for the people that you love. Their conflicts are, come from caring too much and not and making themselves into a martyr for some reason and that just like tenderness really really gets me. So that and Michael from the Kiss Quotient. Loved them both. Number nine, my favorite character. One of my favorite characters right now is Lyra from His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. I have read the first book, have not gotten to the second one yet, but I do want to. So the first one's The Golden Compass, then you have The Subtle Knife and The Amber Spyglass. But Lyra, I just love her so much. I feel like she is a very clever, curious, quick-witted, loyal, brave girl. And I, I respect her for that. And I, I wish I was that when I was her age. I definitely didn't know who I was like she does. I didn't have the self-awareness that she does. And I just love that about her. Another one of my favorite characters is Mark Watney. I think he's hilarious and obviously smart. I'm always attracted to intelligence. I love his potty mouth. I love his humor. I love that he's just like an eternal optimist because I'm not and I can't be that, but I love to see it in others. <laughs> I try to be that, but I, I, I'm not. Number 10, a book that made me cry. I'm just like piling up books now. Obviously, I already mentioned Meet Me Another Life. Definitely made me cry. And I think I cried uh, when I read Daisy Jones and the Six too. I do have a copy of that, but I don't know where it is. I might have lent it to somebody. So those two books, a book that made me happy. And for this one, I chose Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osmond because I just loved it so much. I think this is like a cozy mystery. Is that what a cozy mystery is? If it is, I'm into it. But I haven't really explored cozy mysteries yet, the idea of it. But this is following four, I think it's four of them, men and women in their 70s and 80s. And they're in this retirement village. They have a Thursday night murder club where they try to solve unsolved crimes until one day there is a murder within their realm and they get involved trying to solve it. But the characters, the characters are so lovable, just so lovable. And again, smart. I, I'm seeing a trend here. Their banter is awesome. They get drunk together. They like have these little secrets. They're sassy. They are just, they're just great. They're awesome characters. And, and I thought the second book was already out because it's released overseas, but it's not out until September, September 16th. Very much looking forward to that. The most beautiful book that I own, that I have bought or someone has bought me, I want to say is Remote Control by Nettie Okorafor. I just think it's so gorgeous. I love these colors. You know, you see in my themes, I do a lot of green. I'm a big fan of green. I just think this is just absolutely stunning. All right, number 13 and the last question, books that I need to read by the end of the year. I wanna carry on with The Golden Compass, the dark, His Dark Materials. I wanna read two and three by the end of the year. There's another book. Mm, 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 mm. Ah, so it's called Butter. It's by Erin Jade Lang. And I have tried to find the audiobook for this and I don't think there is one. I'm kind of stumped by this because I, I I read a lot of audiobooks. I mean, I listen, you know, I, I ear read. I ear read a lot of audiobooks. I have never had m any kind of issue finding a book. I don't think there's ever been a specific book that I'm like, okay, I need to find the audio. And I'm just like, there's not one. I don't think there's an audiobook for this book. So I, I just have to get it. Actually, I'm getting it. I already bought it. <laughs> it's on the way. The concept of this, it's a horror, and it's about this, this kid. So he's a lonely, obese boy. Everyone calls him Butter. And he's about to make history. He wants to eat himself to death live on the internet. And he's invited everyone to watch. He gets all of this attention. And I guess as he's in the process of completing suicide live in front of the world, he starts to have doubts. But then like people are urging him on and it becomes this like spectator uh, pressure and this, it's just disturbing, just really, really disturbing. 
So it sounds really good. I definitely want to get to that. There's another one called Pride and Premeditation, which is like a, a Jane Austen mystery series type thing. And there's going to be a few others as well. But this one came out. I've been waiting on it in my library. It's one of those that I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to buy it, but I love Pride and Prejudice. So I've, I've got like 10 weeks still before I get that on my library. So I may just bite the bullet and buy it. We'll see. Another one is called Other People's Houses, and this actually I have not been able to find. I don't think it's released in the States yet. It's an Australian novel. Who's the author of that? I'll put it up here. You'll know. But it's set in Australia, and it kind of reminds me. Do you guys remember At the Deep End of the Ocean? I think it's actually a book, but I remember the movie with Jodie Foster and Ryan Merriman. And it reminds me of that in a way. So you have this woman, she's grieving because she lost her son like 10 years ago and she's still just like a mess about it. She can't move on. Somewhere in her neighborhood or something, this family moves into this new house and they're like this picture perfect family. She sees their son and she thinks for a moment that that's her son. Like that's my son. And so she's trying to figure out what happened and you don't know if you can trust her, if she's unreliable or if there's something really sinister going on. So that one sounds really good to me. If I can get my hands on it or even figure out when the hell it's released here, that would be great. That's it. I'm going to end it there because this video is going to be so goddamn long. If you guys enjoy stuff like this, subscribe. And if you're considering it, just, just bite the bullet, do it. I would, it really helps me out a lot and I appreciate it when you do. Again, I always put all my social media links down, down below if you want to connect on other social medias. And that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I will see you next time. Don't forget that life is short. So read Riley. Cheers and goodbye.